Hello there. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the latest episode of Indie Former is not available in your country. It will be available next month, but in the meantime, try not to panic or kill anyone. We thank you for your viewership. We really don't know how to pronounce it, but Okwini released on PC this month. It's a weird art house puzzler worth a play just to see where it will take you. The train thunders on to the future. The Charnel House trilogy combines not so pretty writing with very pretty and heavily constructed narrative. Blame it on White Knight, but these horror point and click adventures suddenly seem very appealing. The earth crawls its way to the Early access parkour for single and multiplayer with lots of luminescent colours. Plus, you get to lead a revolution against video game oppression. For the third time, you can become a thief, knight or wizard and scroll sideways in a beloved action adventure that looks more beautiful than ever. Also has plenty of time to grow in early access. Running with rifles doesn't seem like a good idea in the physical world perhaps, but it's really fun to do virtually. And what that is, is a top down tactical shooter that has hints of door kickers in its depth of strategy. Etatul, Ectolume, Lumetial. Speak and you shall be heard. Heard by the power of magic, that is. In Verbus Avertus lets you cast spells with your own voice. Just speak in the game's own language of the gods and watch a bolt of lightning, ice, fire, or whatever else it is you have summoned come to life. Seriously, the first time you do this is the most fantastic surreal feeling. It's like you have actually got the power. And because of the solid voice recognition, casting spells throughout your journey never loses that, pardon the pun, magic. In fact, this voice casting that could have easily been a gimmick turns out to be the making of this game. It really makes you feel like you are the wizard in this world, unlike any other game we've played does. Some credit should also be paid to the beautiful temple built on the Unreal Engine and that's just teeming with lore. Speak and you shall be heard like never before. Another throwback to the punishing pixel platformers of yesteryear, Jump Jet Rex stands out with some tight execution and charm. It goes without saying that it does all the little things such as inch perfect controls and level design that make other retro platformers like Super Meat Boy and Shovel Knight so successful. What's more to focus on is the feel of the platforming. In Jump Jet Rex you're always hovering on the rocker boots, so as one Steam reviewer commented, the game almost feels like Flappy Bird. To reiterate, only the movement has the same kind of feel. There isn't a set of impassable pipes blocking your every path. And in a more developed game, the floating feeling of going up and down gives the wonderful nuance of having more room to move and as such control your placement. The platforming is of course capped off by our hero T-Rex, who, with a silly grin and cute little boots, will undoubtedly bring a grin to your face as well. Not to mention you can customise the little dino. Jump Jet Rex could have started life on an SNES. In the retro waste of Westerado, you are the law, and it's up to you to find the man that killed your family. Help townsfolk to find clues and suss out the culprit. An Adult Swim browser game fleshed out, Westerado Double Barreled Strikes Gold Exploring Its Chaos. The game is a quest to avenge your family, but it's the path you choose to find the culprit that forms your identity. And this in essence is what the game is about, exploring the world and more so exploring who your character is. There's a terrific freedom granted to do this too. You can shoot anyone you like mid-sentence, heck, you could kill every NPC in game. But every bullet marks you, maybe it's easier to pull the trigger next time, or perhaps it's a more internally conflicting affair. Once the oil baron is dead, his wealth of info can't be tapped into, so you come to learn that your consequences will haunt you. It's not so much the game is trying to push you one way, as it is making you reflect on your decisions. It's possible to find your target many different ways, just some may be slower than others. 
Also, the bad guy's details are randomised, facilitating replayability and marrying up with the concept of revisiting your choices. In Westerado Double Barreled, it's very much a wild, wild world. After previewing Titan Souls in our upcoming Indie Games video, it's hard to fathom that it's already here for our playing pleasure. Or more fittingly, playing torture. You see, Titan Souls brutally tasks you with a series of David and Goliath matches in which you are, of course, always David. That's not even to mention that your underdog status has been exaggerated to the maximum. You literally have one arrow with which to kill these gigantic and magical Titans. The arrow can be retrieved and reused, but the reason why you're only given one measly arrow is because every giant has one weakness and one way to be killed. That is, you only need one arrow. So the game becomes one of trial and error, in which you constantly die trying to uncover a titan's Achilles heel. Every death is a step closer. But, as we think you guys may be getting at now, these game designers are straight up twisted and cruel. Titan souls will surely quench the masochist inside you. Completely finished and out of early access, the roguelike phenomenon that gets you dancing on your feet, Crypt of the Necrodancer is our number one game this April. We've shown Crypt a lot of love over the last year, and now we'll get to give you the reasons why next week, as we feature in our best indie game of the month video. So that's it guys, Crypt's going to be next week, thanks for watching, my name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh, we'll see you next time here on Indie Former.